Hey everyone, what's going on? Today, I got a bit of a different video going over some tips you can use to improve your aim. With PUBG recently releasing on PS4 and me not making a tip video in quite some time, I thought I'd share a couple tips I use when aiming with a controller on PUBG. Having good aim and controlling recoil well is the most important thing you can do when winning gunfights. When playing other battle royales like Blackout or Fortnite, you can maneuver around an enemy much easier. PUBG's movement system is very slow and sluggish compared to these other battle royales. So this doesn't give you much of a chance if you're in a gunfight to run away or outplay the other player. Most of the time, the only thing you can do is out-aim. The first thing I'll be going over is shooting targets from a distance. If you're shooting a moving target, you need to know how to lead your shots. One thing you can use to better lead your shots is the 1 to 100 rule. In all shooter games, bullets take time to travel. So when shooting people from a distance, you can use the 1 to 100 rule to hit targets more consistently. The basics for this rule is simple. Every 100 meters the target is away from you, that's one body mode you have to lead in front of your target. Now knowing the 1 to 100 rule is the simple part. Being able to follow your target is the hard part. With your controller sticks, it's much harder to follow a target than with a mouse. Instead of always trying to keep your sight at a certain distance in front of your target, just gently tap the stick and predict where the target will move. Once the target looks as if he's the correct number of body molds away, that's when you shoot. Repeat the same tapping on the stick in front of your enemy until you start hitting shots. How hard you tap on the stick will depend on the sensitivity setting you use. And if you don't do this already, it's going to take some practice to get used to. Keep in mind this technique is best used when single fire tapping or using sniper rifles. Also, different weapons and different bullet types have different velocities, so this can throw off how you lead targets as well. As an example, the Mini-14 or the AWM, you would have to lead a little bit closer than if you are using the AKM or the Groza. This is because the Mini-14 and the AWM have much higher bullet velocities. Right here, I'll be leaving a list of all the weapons you would be using to single fire tap and their bullet velocities. Feel free to pause it, I'm going to be moving on in about 5 seconds. The next thing I'll be going over is tips you can use to control a full auto spray. One of the best things you can do before spraying down your enemies is crouching. When crouching, your recoil pattern for all weapons is much easier to control. So if you're planning to spray down a vehicle driving by or somebody running in the distance, your best bet is to crouch. Crouching while spraying can also cause a problem when using a regular controller. If you want to crouch while you're just spraying or shooting, you would have to take your thumb off the stick to press the B button or the circle button. I find myself doing this all the time, and when I take my thumb off the stick to crouch, I lose control of the recoil. This is where elite controllers really come in handy. With button mapping, you can reroute the B button to the back so you can crouch without taking your thumb off the stick. Also, a lot of players do the same thing for the left bumper so it's easier to hold your breath when shooting. Personally, I've yet to use an Elite controller, but right now I'm saving up for one. From all the people I know that's used them, I really haven't heard anything bad about them and I'm looking forward to mine coming in the next couple weeks. If you want to see some good options for both PS4 and Xbox Elite controllers, check out the links in the description. Knowing when to reset your spray is also extremely important when controlling recoil. Depending on the weapon, from certain distances, vertical recoil gets way too hard to control. Knowing beforehand when to reset your spray before your sight gets sky high is extremely important in winning gunfights. More times than not, when I play with friends, randoms, or even subscribers, their fingers get stuck to the trigger. If you don't stop shooting and half your bullets go into the air before you kill the guy, then most likely you're going to have to reload. And if the other player takes his time by single fire tapping or resetting his spray, then you're in trouble. Now I can't say when's a good time to reset your spray for all weapons. The best advice I can give you for this is going into the shooting range and checking out the vertical recoil for each of the weapons. See how much recoil each of the weapons has and reset your spray every time your sight goes above head level. If you don't like going to shooting range, then just playing a lot will also do the trick. Now the next thing I'll be going over is centering your target before you aim down sights. Basically centering means putting your crosshairs over your enemy before you shoot. A lot of players don't do this and panic. They aim down sights before the enemy is even close to their scope. 
If you've ever tried, trying to find a player is much harder and slower in a scope. To get faster reactions, you should be out of your scope to flick on to the enemy. You can also center your target right before you lean. If you see somebody and you're behind a wall, or if you predict somebody's in a spot, then put your crosshair where he is or where you think he is. This will help you lock on your shot faster and be quicker to the trigger so you don't die. The next thing I'll be going over is hip firing and soft aiming. Hip firing is extremely useful in close range gunfights on Xbox and PS4. Now with hip firing you get the fastest reaction since you don't have to aim down sights or steady your gun. If your enemy's close and you just lock your crosshair onto him and spray, most likely you'll melt him. You might get a lucky headshot and some body shots and he'll die pretty quick. You also won't be aiming down sights so your time to shoot would be faster than the other player. Up next is soft aiming. I see a lot of players, especially in third person, overuse this method. It's good in certain close range situations, but definitely not all. Usually the only time I'll use soft aim is for quick corner peeks. If I see a player and he's not running all over the place, I'll usually peek around a corner and soft aim. This player has to be pretty close to me and I wouldn't need accuracy to secure the kill, I would just need a spray. Now other than those rare situations, you'll find me aiming down sights to kill somebody. Practicing and controlling your recoil when aiming down sights is probably the most important thing you can do in this game. Instead of soft aiming and hoping for those headshots at a longer range, aiming down sights is always the better option. If you have a bad habit of always soft aiming, I suggest go play first person. First person will pretty much force you to aim down sights in a ton of gunfights. It will also fine tune your aiming and gunfight skills since you don't have to rely on peeking behind a wall. Now that we're more than halfway through the video, if you guys are finding any of these tips helpful, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. Let's try to reach 100 likes, it really helps out the channel. Now the next few things I'm going over are a few extra tips that not many players know. If you are more than 80% boosted, then that means recoil will be easier to control. Yeah, yeah, you guys didn't know that? The full, full boosting actually keeps you, uh, you get to shoot a bit more, uh, bit more steady. Like, it, it, you can control recoil a little bit better. It's like a buff. It does two things. Yeah, full, full boost is hard to maintain. It disappears relatively quickly. This next tip really doesn't have to do with aiming, but moving your camera left and right really helps with people not being able to get headshots on you. This small sway can really throw off another player if he's trying to line up some shots. The next tip is leaning when shooting. A lot of players like to lean when shooting because it moves their head from the center of a target. This can throw off the other player's aim if they're going for headshots. Up next is using the zeroing meter when sniping. If you're not used to bullet drop, then using the zero meter will definitely help. Personally, when I'm sniping, I don't like zeroing in, but it's definitely up to you. Finding your perfect sensitivity is extremely important when maintaining your aim on PUBG. Lower settings make aiming and weapon handling easier, but at the same time, it'll also make your character turn very slowly. Meanwhile, higher sensitivity settings make your character turn much more quickly, but your aim will be much harder to control as a result. If you would like to see my sensitivity settings, I'll be leaving a clickable image at the end of this video. Keep in mind, changing all your settings at once isn't the best idea. I suggest changing one or two settings, then practicing, and then maybe changing a few more a little later. Now I'm going to talk a little about me using control freaks when playing this game. A lot of people don't like control freaks because they don't like how it feels and it makes the stick a little bit too high. Personally, I love the control freaks I use and I think it helps me control my sensitivity settings and my aiming a bit easier. If you guys want to check out which control freaks I use, I'll also be posting those links in the description. What? What are you guys doing in the same app? Well guys, those are some of the tips I use when trying to improve my aim on PUBG. Whether you're a new player just starting out on the game or an advanced player looking for some new tips to try out, I hope you learned something from this video. And one last tip I just remembered is to watch streamers play PUBG on console. There's tons of streamers out there in the console community that you can learn from. If you guys want to stop by and watch me live, I usually live stream here on YouTube. Just hit subscribe and turn on that notification bell. As always, everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Let's go. Let's get out of here.